compliments to all you Cambians. Soar into the stinky dragon and quaff our latest coffee. Devils in the fiend tales. Ooh, it's a mixture of half cap espresso, blazing brandy, hell nut syrup topped with whipped scream and cinnamon spears. One drop of this demonic dram works like a charmed command every time. Previously, our adventurers were aboard the Groteth Express with Inspector Weezer, but Jacques threw any previous plans out the window. The party gave chase to the fast feline and wandered into some weird woods. After some mystifying experiences in the mist, they finally found their furry friend and stumbled into one headless horseman. Latch onto a libation, let's leap into our lore. So many woos and wows. Wow, that's <laughs> called wazzles. acting. Oh, <laughs> Hello, everyone. I'm Gustavo Cerullo, the Dungeon Master of our future party. I'm going to hit our four players with an arrow. Yeah! <laughs> Ow. Bring it! <laughs> this week's role-playing warm-up question is, what's your character's personality type? Bonus points if you take an online personality quiz while role-playing as your character. I took it. You did it. I took it right before this. Oh, did you? Yeah. What did it come out well, as? Let's, let's see what Elga uh, is. Hello, everyone. I'm Elga Von Brath, played by Barbara Dunkelman. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm a female half-elf vampire barbarian. No, I need you to speak in that voice for every time Barbara's talking. Hello, welcome to Dungeons and Dragons. Today, we're here to... Okay, I'm going to stop doing <laughs> Get some ASMR dice rolls in there. So I took my personality test. I mean, Elga took her personality test. She used a computer for the first time. Uh, it was weird technology. Mm. It's like a weird sending stone of some type. Yeah, and there was a lot of really weird questions like, do you care about your friends? And do you care about what people think of you? And all these things that I've never really been asked before. Very strange. Anyways, I'm a type four. <laughs> <laughs> type four? That's, is that like, That's my Enneagram. Elga has diabetes? What? <laughs> it's, it's type four is the individualist. Oh, okay. Yeah. okay, that sounds right. And oh. so, you know, it says uh, sen sensitive, introspective type, little dramatic, little self-absorbed, which I find a little bit insulting for the common <laughs> Also just little. L little, yes, uh, obviously. I figured you'd be more like an O-positive or a, <laughs> yeah, I don't know, like... All types of blood yeah. are just mixing around in my stomach. <laughs> I'm like a, like a giant mixology class in there. <laughs> <laughs> So type four, the individualist. I'm, I'm taking a note. Mm, interesting. Mm -hmm. It was very, I will say, uh, peeking behind the curtain, very interesting to take a personality quiz as a different character. Like, oh, as a yeah. character. You're yeah. lying the whole time. I know. I'm like, what would Elga say to this? What would she do in this situation? Yeah. Oh. Uh, <laughs> hey, yeah. Barney. Barney? Barney? No. <laughs> Sidebar, uh, I once read that someone described computer processors as rocks that we etched magic runes into and tricked into thinking. Oh, no. Yeah. And I was like, oh, that's a weird way to think it's of it. It's actually kind of true, though. Minerals and metals. Right, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, who's up next? Oh, yeah, yeah. Hey, I'll go. <laughs> this is me pushing my way through the crowd. All the mic. I like that song. Hey there, it's Chip Haney played by Blaine Gibson. <laughs> uh, and I, I took one of them uh, personality thingamabs and I got uh, Infudge. Infudge. Oh, you got the letter thingies. Yeah, what was that? Oh, Infudge. Uh... E N F J. <laughs> Did you forget what that last letter was? Yeah, it took me a second. <laughs> there was a pause. Uh, uh, it, it's the what does that stand for? That there is a I don't know a protagonist, a oh. person that is extroverted, intuitive, feeling, and judging personality traits. These mm. warm, forthright types love helping others, and they tend to have strong ideas and values. Uh, they back their perspectives with the creative energy to achieve their goals. That's actually pretty accurate. Yeah. I, I was like, I didn't take the test, but I was looking through, and I was like. This one rings the most chip. Mm. Uh, okay. I guess I probably could have just done that, huh? No, no, you you committed. I appreciate <laughs> I that. Yeah. I, like I mean, it. I took the test. Inspiration time. Give it to me. <laughs> I think you already, we already have one. Do we not? I think you do. Oh, good. Well, I didn't take the test. Aha! <laughs> <laughs> Teacher, he didn't do his test. <laughs> Who's up next? Me. I'm John. 
I'm I'm John. John. Uh, I play Mati Confucius, who is an Air Cochrane ghost monk. Uh, I tried to take a personality test once, but uh, when I submitted my results, the whole machine broke. Mm. Uh, mm. I don't think there was, there's technologies that can uh, categorize Mati at this point. You're just so mysterious. Yes, yes. And the person giving the test also gave me $20. I don't know what was going on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but as far as the personality, I consider myself quite the independent person um, who takes a while uh, warming up to people. But once uh, I do, uh, I, I am committed to them for eternity. Oh, eternity. Duly noted. I've got a long time. Yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a, lot, that's a real long and time. Me too. <laughs> I don't you maybe you're individualist like me. Maybe it would be maybe, number maybe. four together. You're not here for a good time, you're here for a long time. <laughs> me, and, me and Barney are like your two puppy dogs. One of us a little older, the other one's young and spry, but we're both gonna die. <laughs> and they leave both your still lives. play fetch. Bark. <laughs> Bark? Hi, I'm Chris Damaris and I play Barney Farney, the human cleric. And uh Myers Briggs. I knew Myers Briggs <laughs> way back in the day. Myers Briggs, now he fantastic singing voice. Yes, he yes, <laughs> sang like an angel, sang like an angel, and I and I would go up to him and I'd say, "Hey, I want to have a, I, I want, I want to have a little get together. Would you be, would you be free to have?" They're always hard to schedule because mm. everyone is, everyone always loves Myers Briggs. They're great people. This is one person? Myers and Briggs. The duo. The duo. Yes. Oh. Did, didn't they write a bunch of uh, musicals? Did they? <laughs> Did they? <laughs> what? Are, or are you thinking of a... Uh, you know, Myers and Briggs. They did uh, the Pirates of Penzance. Yep. Stop mm -hmm. it. I hear Michael laughing. I know it's not true. Whatever you're doing. Uh, they were good friends with Merriam and Webster. <laughs> yes, yes. You knew them too. Yeah, oh, we as good friends with them. Lovely, lovely chaps. Hmm. Much nicer than Roger. <laughs> <laughs> what is happening? That's Our Roger for John. <laughs> I just love the blank, like, like the absolute absence L of sound. Listen, four people listening to this podcast are going to laugh. This is for those four people. Yeah, the four people who are laughing in this room. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I've always said that. My jokes aren't for everybody. They're for like five people out there. Hey, okay. that's all that matters. As long as you can make one person laugh. Yeah. Do it a good job. If Gus made you laugh, please let us know on socials. at Stinky Dragon Pod. Yeah. yeah. What's your favorite song by Myers-Briggs? <laughs> <laughs> I am the very motto of the mother. <laughs> Sing that whole song is Matid. I sent you a Slack. I don't know if you got it, Blaine. Uh, you do not have a inspiration die in your character sheet. I think you're supposed to have one. I think you might have used you it during our it. extra life. You're bit. right. I added it. So hey. I just want to make sure you knew you had one. Sorry to interrupt, but shout out to everyone who came and watched us and, helped and donated. Uh, for a good cause on Extra Life. Yeah, really that was it. madness. I don't know if it, it'll be up on uh, on the website. It will be. To watch, but... StinkyDragonPod.com. We had a whole... Not to derail the campaign too much, but Micah had wrote, wrote up a whole module for us to do a big one-shot, and Gus barely got through, I think, the first page <laughs> because we just kept having to stop for donations, which was an incredible thing because it's all for the kids, but... It was a lot of chaos. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. yeah. But very curious to know more details of what that module was. Sorry, I didn't mean to derail, yeah. but... No, no, it's, it's, it's a good reminder. Yes, thank you very much, everyone. What's going on in the story? Let's move on with the show. <laughs> yes, please. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Speaking of Matee, Jock begins mewing incessantly, and a faint, galloping silhouette quickly approaches. A shadowy steed swiftly stops just short of the hole. A wispy rider sits atop the stallion wearing a double-breasted gray coat with a blazing jack-o'-lantern for a head. Oh, <gasps> Dadless Horseman! Oh, my. Bonjour! It would seem you nearly made a grave mistake. Perhaps you were on the aunt for your own demise? <laughs> no matter. Allow me to be your host in the city of ghosts. Bienvenue and welcome to Parish. Parish. Oh, holy city of Parish. <laughs> Is that Elga? <laughs> no, that's Barbara. That's 100% me. <laughs> now that the pleasantries are out of the way, are you in league with the coven? Oh, <laughs> the horseman unsheaths a sword licking with gray flames and waves it in your faces. Horseman. <laughs> yeah, we all heard horseman. it. We all heard the it. horseman <laughs> unsheaths. <laughs> Speak quickly, strangers, or my sword, Flame Phantom, will slice you into Scots ribbons. 
uh, uh, you asked for part of the coven? The coven. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? I hit my head very badly before, so I'm just, I, my memory is a little hazy. She did jump off a train and hit the ground rather hard. Yeah, you see, I have, I'm full of blood from <laughs> all the uh, accidents we experienced. You're full of blood? It's, we are not a part of the coven. <laughs> Elga spills a bit of her sippy cup of appreciation <laughs> on her. Oh, no. Make a persuasion check for me, uh, Matid. You should have left that to me there, Matid. I don't know how your persuasion is. That's a 10, so I'm going to roll again. <laughs> Using an uh, inspiration die? No, I'm just going to roll again. Uh, <laughs> yes, I am. I am. Uh, 16. Oh, the, the horseman doesn't seem quite as threatening to you. Matid, uh, but he is still looking at Elka, who apparently has spilled blood all over herself, if I'm <laughs> understanding what happened correctly. Me a doctor. <laughs> Barbara is literally doing like the side eye look around <laughs> to see if anybody's buying even what she's saying. <laughs> hmm, sounds like a coven ploy to me. No, I'm just a tiny child who has injured herself. Do you have no heart? Sir? <laughs> <laughs> he ain't got no head, that's for sure. <laughs> hey there, Chip Haney. Pleasure to meet you. Before we get to Chip, I want a deception check out of Elga. Oh, okay. oh, man. Okay. The way you, I could describe the way Chip Haney talks, mm -hmm. it's it's the audible version 11. of a power walk. Oh, I like that. Just a little. Uh, the, the, yeah. the sway in the hips. The horseman sidles his horse up a little closer to you, Elga. Perhaps you are a hag in disguise. <gasps> Excuse you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then, uh, I, Chip, was Chip going to say something there? Oh, yeah. He's just like, hey, hey, we're all friends here. We just got off the train and we're a little lost. Uh, uh, that's a oh, beautiful steed you got there. Hey, hey there, champ. Uh, can I can I go pet the horse? <laughs> is this going to be Chip's first animal handling check? Oh, it might be. Yeah, make an animal handling check. That Why not? Is not my strongest. Why? Well, you're, why are you trying to touch an animal then? Because you're, it's you're literally trying to handle an animal. Oh, that's not bad. That's an eighteen. The uh, horseman seems like he's uh, he's going to get very angry, but the horse is receptive to you approaching it. Hey dear, hey Chip dear. Haney, uh, confirmed horse girl. Yes. Hey dear, beautiful beast. What's what's your name? <laughs> How are you doing? Hey dear. <laughs> Come here. What Come kind here. of ho what kind of horse do you think it is, Chip? A uh, big. Big horse. What about Barney? Does Barney want to interject or do anything, or is he staying quiet there? If you don't trust us, I cast, can cast Zone of Truth, and then we will all be truthful. Yes. Hmm. Yeah? Yeah, just make a persuasion check, why not? If you've ever seen Meet the Parents, it's something called Circle of Trust or mm -hmm. whatever. We could mm -hmm. do that, essentially, is what Barney's saying. Fourteen. The horseman, you know, seems to relax a little bit at the suggestion. And it seems like he's about to speak when all of a sudden you hear screams the sound from afar. Uh, everyone make a perception check. Are they like streams of joy? Well, it depends what the perception check says. 16. 16 as well. Oh, 18. Nice. 10. We both have seen with our eyes. Boom. You all hear screams in the distance. At first, it seems difficult to, like, pin down where it's coming from, but after a second, you can make out the screams and it sounds like maybe some kind of ruckus coming from the west. Uh, and when you look in that direction, there appear to be lofty walls in that uh, off to the west. Lofty walls? Yeah. Are these like like uh, city defense walls or? Maybe, yeah. Huh. The horseman's head has, uh, you know, whipped around and is looking in that direction and says, quickly, who's the city? Can I ride shotgun? <laughs> no. What's your, uh, what's your what's your horse's name? No. Really quick, it's very important. What's your horse's name? Gastalion. Gastalion? No oui. one trites like Gastalion. <laughs> no one. And with that, the uh, horseman flies atop his steed quickly to the west. I, 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 I give chase. <laughs> Just running oh, behind guess, the horse. I guess we're all going now. Yeah, uh, yeah. Matid takes flight, let's say about 20 feet off the ground and heads that direction. Elga starts running with Chip. You all in your flying. What about Barney? Barney, you know, makes up the rear. Makes slow. up the rear? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, just kind of like, I don't think he's in a hurry. <laughs> okay. Well, I think he was cut off guard, so he's kind of like, what? Oh, and then he, and then he picks up the speech. Matid, can we do the chipmunk special? And then I, and I t pose <laughs> while is, I run. Why is that the chipmunk special? The chipmunk special. It's where you pick me up and then you, and I t pose, and we have our Superman and Lois moment, and then you drop me into combat. But why is it the chipmunk special? Yeah, that's special? what I wanted to know. I'm Chip Haney, 
Emmett Teed is a monk. Oh. <laughs> this was like episode oh. like monk. three or four. I didn't know we, I couldn't recall what, that. We had named it? Yeah, someone from the community. I can't remember who, but they were like, Chipmunk. That's the pairing name. That is a that is a great name. Yeah, I love it. That's Very a great good. community. Chipmunk! Chipmunk! And she ain't called Chipmunk! <laughs> Where? Where's the Chipmunk? <laughs> Mateed uh, picks up Chip. <laughs> Alvin, Simon, yeah. Theodore. That's what I was like. Is it, is it like a Chip and Dale thing? Yeah. Is that who it is? Like a Rescue Rangers reference? None! <laughs> rescue, you just call it Rescue Rangers. Yeah. The terrain is pretty difficult, and the horsemen took off so quickly. Uh, everyone make a survival check to see if uh, how y'all are able to keep up. Well, what about the flying? You're dragging me across the tree tops. <laughs> just going, just, ah, <laughs> that's a 22. You're making it anyway, just so, just so we know. That's a nine. Barney's taking his time, but he's being careful. He's being careful. Slow and steady. I'm, yeah. uh, Elga rolled an eight. 13. Yeah, I think, uh, Mateed, you maybe briefly forget that you're carrying Chip and you drag him through some uh, some high branches. Ow, 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 <laughs> my pants, they're coming down! <laughs> <laughs> you're just keep posing a man. Just dragging. <laughs> you go, hey there, oh there, hey there. Oh. <laughs> you're able to keep up while safely navigating the terrain and, you know, the slippery frozen river, and you arrive outside of what appear to be some city walls. Okay. What does the headless horseman do as we approach the walls? He stops at the top of the wall and asks, Do you need the rope? Wait, how did the horse get up there? He flew. Oh, yeah. wow. The horse flew? Yeah. Gastalian. Well, like sure is majestic. Wow. Is that the official name, Gastalian? Yeah. That's so good. You can thank Michael for that. He's kind of good at that. <laughs> I, I think actually I, I don't need the rope, but you guys need the, the rope. The, I don't need the, the rope. I won't turn down a rope. <laughs> In fact, I'll I'll turn up the rope. Oh, I don't get it. I need to go up the rope. Oh, Barney's getting turned. Uh, I'm gonna use one of my new abilities. To be leveled up. I'm oh yeah. Use my climbing. Oh yeah. So I could uh, I my climbing speed is equal to my walking speed. So Ooh. I assume it's not more than forty feet up. It's pretty high. It's about uh, it, you know since it, like uh, Chip was alluding to earlier. Presumably, these are defensive walls. So these walls are, if you had to take a guess from where you are on the ground, they're probably about 60 feet high. Okay. But yeah, the horseman kicks down a, a rope and then disappears over the wall. Uh, Matit, what are you, you going to do? I'll, I'll take the rogue up over the wall. Chipmunk? Yeah. Yeah! Barney, do you want to share this rope with me? Okay. You could just hold on to me and I climb it for the both of us. Yeah, okay. Okay, so Elga just uses both her arms to climb while Barney's, I assume, holding on. And, and what's you guys' name? Barney Mateed. Uh, okay, yeah, but Bat, Barbarian. Barney Barney Elga. Elga. Barbat. Batbar. <laughs> Barbell. Bar Barbell. Wait. What? What? Uh, Bat old man. <laughs> hey, it's just, it's kind of like Yoda and Luke. <laughs> yeah. I could be a backpack while you climb. Swim from a uh, hairy van. So you have that new ability, which allows you to climb. This, this is a little bit out of your range for that. The, uh, oh, I'm using the rope. Oh, well, I was going to say, uh, so, you know, for the last little bit, you will have to, you know, like, make an athletics check for it. Okay. But I will let you roll with advantage because of your, uh, your newfound. Yeah. So roll an athletics check with advantage. Okay. That's a... Okay. Well, there's a... I rolled 14 twice. Yeah, we'll say it's a little tricky. Maybe you're not used to having uh, the dead weight on your back. Awesome. Okay, hey, he's old. He's not that old, though. <laughs> Check his pulse. A loosely alive corpse. But yeah, you're able to uh, get up to the top and, you know, heave yourself and the old man up with you. And, you know, all four of you get up there. And on the other side of the wall is a sprawling city of shivering streets awash with wandering spirits and buildings blanketed in mist. A perfume of decadent decay and freshly dug soil permeates the air while a bitter wind whistles between alleys. The whole city is washed out in dim, pale light from the overcast clouds, barely lit by a half sun, or maybe it's double moons. Everyone roll a perception check again. See if I can find our Louvre. 11. 12. 13. 21. Oh, I should have said 14. Because the numbers. 14 plus <laughs> 7. So 11, 12, 13, 21. Everyone hears a chorus of blood curdling cries and calamity and there's like a tumultuous sound that appears to be coming from a few blocks uh, away near a tavern. Mm. Ah, Perry. <laughs> <laughs> ah, the sounds of the city. <laughs> Elga, you do notice more with your uh, keen bat eyes. What? Bat eyes. Bat eyes. 
Bats don't have good eyes. And bat ears. <laughs> oh my God. It's my keen senses. I have, keen bat eyes. I have just... echolocation and keen hearing. So. I know, but he said eyes. He said eyes. <laughs> She's staring at into a wall. Well, that's why I have those little glasses. Remember? Yeah. Your keen bat ears. <laughs> Gus did not like that I called him out on that. Well, Elga saw this and you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, <laughs> Elga, you notice uh, a few landmarks around the city. It seems like the entire city is hedged in by this wall, you know, that you had to climb. Hmm. There's a river to the far north that splits off a quarter of the city. And at the heart of the city appears to be a massive mausoleum. And beyond the walls of the city are fields and fields of tombstones and graves farther than even your keen bat eyes can see. <laughs> <laughs> I looked right at John as I said that. He did. I Vitamins. loved it. Do you think the gravestones are just people's homes here? Is it maybe like maybe they just sink into the ground where they go sleep, go night night. I don't know. I do know that I really like the look of the city. I, I bet you do. What's that big old mausoleum there in the middle? Is it like uh, I don't know. Let me take a look. Stare hard <laughs> with your bad eyes. Your great bad eyes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, I'm, t- I'm taking every. I'm turning this car around. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna tell you exactly what it looks like, but don't be alarmed if all of a sudden I sound like an older male <laughs> voice. <laughs> <laughs> Here it is. It's um, it's a rather. <laughs> you guys are too good at this. It's a rather large building. It seems like it's definitely you know there's space between it and all of the surrounding buildings right in the center. You know it's roughly like a large square with the walls pointing to the northeast, the southeast, the southwest, and the northwest. It's like it's not along cardinal directions. It's tilted a little bit, almost like a diamond if you're looking at it from above. So it's not the Eiffel Tower. No, it is not the Eiffel okay. Tower. Oh, oh perish. <laughs> I don't know how, like, one for one we're making this city. Yeah. I bet this smells the same, though. Because <laughs> France smells. <laughs> <laughs> Floating down the street, all of you spy uh, local spirits crying out in terror. The screams are coming from, which direction did you say? Like, the west or something? It seems like, like everywhere, everywhere, but it's it's more... There's a ruckus at, like, a tavern. Correct. It's mm. more concentrated around a tavern, which is just a little further west into the city from where you okay. are. At the tavern, what spirits are crying out? Is it, like, whiskey or vodka? There it is. <laughs> there it is. That's Take good. away your inspiration, That's guys. <laughs> Can I actually... Per- Perceive if uh, you guys get on to me every time I use the word perceive. <laughs> I love but it. It's the every only time word I know. It's my favorite. Do I know if these uh, screams, if this is just like their normal talk? Like if this is like a, 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 the thing that they do in this land? Yeah, make a mm, Mo- call lo- perception like check. Local parlance. Yeah, this is like how they, you know. Ah, yes, I got to the bottom of this with my two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have no idea what anyone's saying. You can't make out any of the words. Matid, I know, like, these are kind of your people-ish, maybe, where you're from. What do you mean by that? I don't actually know. (laughs) I mean... (laughs) (laughs) Be very careful with how you phrase this. (laughs) Anyway. (laughs) Oh, my God. Elka just jumped off the wall. Oh, (laughs) yes. I mean, like, ghosts. Ghosts, right? I, like, I think there's the, a connection that can un, be made. The yeah. undead? The dead? Yeah, and you guys sound kind of like each other. Like, are you saying I scream all the time? No. <laughs> ah! Are you saying that Matid's a ghost? A <laughs> oh, ghost? Oh, <laughs> Matid casts ethereal phase and puts their hand straight through Barney's face. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> well, do, you, do you recognize anything from this or... Do you think we should go down there? Is it dangerous? I don't know if I've ever visited Parish before. I would imagine if I'd been here, I'd remember this wonderful place. This is fantastic. <laughs> but I am very curious what is happening as that happened. If we want to go and investigate, I'd be down for that. I think we should. Okay, real quick, is there like memory loss with Matid in, in their their past life or, or anything like that? I made it clear that Matid doesn't quite remember how they died at okay. the very least, but mm. we've got a fair amount of memory of like their past you know, not past life, but the past of them themselves. Mm. Not full Barney, just uh, doesn't remember how they died. Mm. Well, let's go mm. investigate those screams. Go to the tavern! I, I pick up Chip. Is there a rope down as well? No, but you can pick up the one that the Headless Horseman, you know, left on the outside for you and then just, you know, turn it and let it down on the inside it's and go down. 60 feet of rope's going to be heavy. Battle rope's a great exercise. Yeah, yeah. Good for your 
back and shoulders. Elga flips it over like it's a piece of floss. Yeah, that's uh, no problem at all for mighty Elga. And then Elga does the floss. <laughs> I'm so young. <laughs> you all get down to the street level, and a random citizen runs up to you, Barney, and grabs you and says, Oh, help! Help me! Okay. Someone asked me a question, and I don't know the answer. I don't know it either. I turn to the others. Help! Help us! <laughs> we don't know the answer to a question. Now everybody calm down. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> so a ghost bought a house, and it has all the usual rooms, except for one. Oh, no. What one does it not have? Oh, uh, a, a ghost bought a house. A boo room. A boo room? Doesn't sound familiar. John, do you understand? Or you're my deep uh, 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 Just face. my head is in my hands because I immediately smelled bad, bad puns and bad. jokes coming ahead. <laughs> well, it's a little a stinky bro. in here. Yeah. No. Cellar. See? You're having the same problem I'm having. Oh, we'll figure it out eventually, Brown don't closet. you worry. A laundry. Huh? <laughs> Do you know why ghosts are such bad liars? Because you can see right through them. Ooh, that's it. Yay! I feel so relieved. But what room do they not have in their house? A man cave. Living room. Ooh, that's it. Ah! Oh, oh my thank God. you. <laughs> You've really helped me. All Itchy's not gonna forget what a solid you've done for me today. Itchy? Yeah. The name's Chip Haney. Well, yeah. I'm going for the handshake. <laughs> oh, <laughs> pleasure to meet you. Hey, here's another one. You hear me? You feel me? You know that I'm there, but you'll never find me. What am I? I don't know your name. My I'm wife? sorry. Itchy. Uh... Good to meet you. Uh... Oh, it's cheese. I get that. Uh, That's up with my wife. I like your friend Scratchy. <laughs> <laughs> you'll feel me. You'll hear me. You already told you the answer. It's an itch. An itch? Right? No, 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 no. Oh, I'm itchy. It. You'll find me. I'm right here. You feel me, everybody? <laughs> Did he just say the answer is <sighs> itchy, wasn't it? No, this is his name. His name's itchy. Oh, oh, I thought I that was... I use the wind? Oh, that's it! Oh, okay. I, oh, I do not like that I'm getting these. You're so smart. I do not smart. want to participate. Oh, you're going to help me I with... I can find the wind. Oh, you can? He breaks it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> you can't see me, oh, and more. if you say my name, I will disappear. What am I? But if we can't see you, aren't you already disappointed? See, I've been itching my head all morning trying to figure this one out. All right, do you have scratches as a ghost? <laughs> chip, chip, it's a pebble. Um, We're all just in a group huddle while this person is like right outside. Do you, do we need to like pay you or something? Or is this like... Oh, a no. These answers oh, okay. are all that I need. They've been driving me crazy trying to figure them out. Oh, I, can't. Oh, I feel ya. <laughs> How about this one? The more you take away, the, the bigger I get. Uh, yeah, hole? hole? Yeah. Hmm. Maybe a specific kind of hole. Uh, a grave. Ooh, ah, that's grave. it. Yeah. Ah. You all don't sound very excited about this. No, no, no it's so, so excited fun. About more jokes. I love riddles. Oh, no. These aren't oh. jokes. These are life or undeath questions. <laughs> <laughs> Why, yes. What, what, actually, have you described what Itchy... Itchy's like a just a, a yeah, what ethereal is being. Yeah, it's like an incorporeal being, I think would be like a technical <laughs> D D explanation for it. But yeah, like a, a ghost like creature. Okay. What and is it like humanoid? Yeah, vaguely. You know, it's got, you know, two arms, two legs, you know, seems to be holding itself in an upright posture. Why are you plagued with so many questions? My boss is going to kill me if I don't figure these out. Who is your boss? Oh, my boss? 
My boss is Poacher. Oh, Deathly's child. <laughs> say my name. Say my name. When no, no one, one is around, around you, you, you say baby, I love you. I'm leaving. That's it. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, why, why is uh, Pacha requiring <laughs> 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 the sound of a door? <laughs> my my back to God. Of so door. I <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, why is Pacha requiring you to have so many of these questions answered? I gotta have them on his desk by 5 p.m. What sort of job is this? Riddle answering. <laughs> that's a, that's a, that's it's a, a pretty big industry. People come to perish from all around. Do you have like benefits? Like what is that? What's the salary like? Oh, it's competitive, you know. Oh yeah. <laughs> We've match? got health care to die for. Is the answer silence? Oh yes, that's it. Okay. Thank you so much. You're you sure? Are you You're sure free. it wasn't Destiny's Child? <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure? Then he begins floating off, muttering to himself. Oh, did I free the spirit? <laughs> silence the wind, a grave, living room. You can't Bye. see through that. Matisse's gonna oh, roll initiative because oh, Matisse's ready to fight whoever comes up and does that again. <laughs> <laughs> Someone else running by stops and goes, Oh, help! I, I could use help! Help me! I'm on it. What do you need? I can't remember my name. Oh. oh no. Uh, what, uh, can, do you, what do you remember? Parish. That's you okay. You're... How about Paris? Paris. That's a good name. I don't think that's it. Do you have any items on your per on your body or person? Body? Like an ID? Or like a... Oh, is that is it, looks it looks around. <laughs> well, do you have any... Anything? Any possessions? <laughs> possessions. I don't mean that as in you're possessing people. Oh, no, 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 no. That's not, that's not me. Some people are into that. Is there anyone around that you know? That you recognize? I recognize you. Oh, no, you don't. Like, like you no, know I don't. Elga? Me? No. You recognize Elga? Yeah, we met, right? Like, Wait. right now. Oh, oh, that's true. Yeah, okay. very good. Yeah. Good to meet you. Uh, I would introduce myself, but I can't remember my name. Okay. Is the Headless Horseman with us? No, he is uh, flo headed off towards the tavern. Okay. Why don't I introduce you to this song by a band called Destiny's Child? <laughs> <laughs> The, uh, the the random uh, passerby wanders off. He said, "Say my name." Say, my name. <laughs> muttering to himself, "What was it? Is it Lucas? No, that's not it." Paris? Does Matid recognize this creature? Make a wisdom check. Oh, wisdom check your butt. This place is so sad. There's just people that are just. I can't. Are we gonna have to be remembering these answers? Nat 20, 23. Wow. This person does not look or does not look familiar at all to you. You have, okay. you, you have never seen this entity in your life before. Does it seem like there's something magical going on with their memory loss, or does it just seem like normal kind of day-to-day -day parish? Yeah, uh, like looking around, is everyone manically moving around in the same way of these people, or is these just two randos? Both of you, Barney and Matid, make perception checks. 16. That's a four. Matid, you can't really make out what's going one way or another. There's, like, the streets are just so chaotic. Barney, on the other hand, you can tell that people seem to be panicking for a myriad of reasons. Mm. Some people seem to be panicking because of what's happening outside the tavern. Some people seem like they're preoccupied with other things. It's just kind of a mishmash all around. Uh, did we make it to the tavern? Yeah, what, what is oh, happening? Oh, y'all are on the streets. Y'all just got down from the bottom okay, of the wall. So yeah. can we see tavern? Yeah, it's not terribly far from where you are. You all want to start making your way in that direction? Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah, why not? You all continue on your way down the street just a little to the west over in the direction of the tavern. And as you get closer, uh, you hear like a boom, boom, crash. And just outside of a stone tavern is a fearsome frost giant wildly swinging an ice pick axe in one hand, gripping a young lady in his other hand. Oh. Lewis don't believe in the undead, only the dead dead. The pale blue giant strikes the cobblestone courtyard with a thunderous crack. The frosty pick pierces the stony ground, turning it to ice, and then with one swift swing, he heaves the gravel into the air, aiming it straight at a child nearby. <gasps> Louis, oh. baby, let's calm down. Did everyone roll initiative. No. Bonjour, everybody. John here. I uh, hope you're having a wonderful holiday season and you're eating lots of yummy treats and treating yourselves well and being merry and bright and all those wonderful things. I'm here with some updates on Stinky World Happenings, and boy, have we got some happenings. Next month, I am so happy to announce that we are celebrating Stinkuary. Uh, all month long, we're going to be reaching out to y'all to become direct supporters of our show by becoming first members. Uh, you might not know this, but every 
time someone becomes a patron of Tales from Stinky Dragon with First, uh, they get to be part of contributing to the creation of all of our wonderful stinky episodes and shows and more. And for Stinkuary, next month, we are spending the entire month raising awareness for this and support for Tales from Stinky Dragon from listeners like yourself. And then it is all culminating on a huge, super stinky stream on January 26th, where we will be playing a specially made giant D&D adventure live for everyone. And this ain't no one or two hour one shot. This is going to be massive. On top of that, as you guys add to our month long drive for patrons, it will affect how difficult our stream is. So show your support and make us really flex those D&D skills that Gus has been trying to get us to learn. Um, it is an understatement to say we want nothing more than to make more stuff from the Tales and Sticky Dragon universe for you all, but we absolutely cannot do it without your patronage and support. Head to stinkydragonpod.com slash first to support our team. Thank you so much for listening to our show and for being a part of our amazing community. See you all in Stinkuary. But wait, there's more. We've got even more fun stuff happening for you guys who want more stinky content. This month, this week, we have a live stream just for our first members. It's a white elephant gift exchange between the Groteth characters. It's going to be fun. Join Elga, Barney, Chip, Mateed, and everyone's favorite Groteth character, Gustavo Sarola, as we exchange gifts for the holidays. So mark your calendars for this Friday, December 15th at 12 p.m. Central Time, and join us at roosterteeth.com slash live for a fun little holiday stream. And if you want some more fun, I suggest you go watch stinky dragon adventures our full-length puppet show that's airing right now at stinkydragonpod.com for everybody episode five came out last week it was all about mud i adored it episode six comes out this thursday so check it out have some fun if you enjoy it and you want even more of that puppet content become a first member and you get to watch our behind the scenes show show me the magic which is led by chris and blaine who are joined by cast and crew and they talk about how they made this amazing show that was made with so much love you you can tell with every second of it. Uh, but yeah, go check that out at stinkydragonpod.com right now. And before you go, we've been working really hard on making some amazing merchandise options for you guys to buy to rep your favorite Stinky Dragon stuff. We got this awesome new Kyborg shirt. It genuinely is amazing. I'm wearing it right now. It's so comfortable. It's so cool looking. You can buy it at store.roosterteeth.com. And if you go right now, um, there are 30% off right now site-wide until December. December 13th. That's everything on the site is 30% off. And we got our pins that just came out of Gum Gum Bart and the Stinky Dragon logo. We got shirts. We got blankets. We got everything you could want. And we got even more coming. So check there constantly. But go right now for this fun little deal. Also, we're on social media. Big surprise. You can interact with us on our Discord, our Rooster Teeth Discord. You can talk with us and find friends on there of the show. First members get to submit things like magic items and NPC names, um, or even favorite moments from the campaign for us to like puppet and animate later. We kind of like love to use your guys' help for that kind of stuff. So go to bit.ly slash stinky discord to join. Um, and if Discord's not your jam, you can still have fun with us on social media at stinky dragon pod. Um, we're everywhere, including our own subreddit um, run by our community at r slash stinky dragon podcast if you want to support our show um, directly i would encourage you to consider becoming a first member at stinky dragon pod.com slash first uh, first members if you don't know they're our version of patreon they support us and allow us to create the content we're doing right now and even more um, plus you get a little something back you'll get access to like all kinds of perks like there's you get to listen to the show like ad free um, and you can watch our exclusive shows like second wind or the one i just talked about show me the magic um, and there's even monthly subscriber events like live streams and discord events and exclusive merch and so much more and you just get to feel good that you support a bunch of like weird artists like make D D show stuff i mean that's the biggest perk of them all thank you so much have a happy holiday season kisses to your dog bye Hey, when you give someone a gift, you want them to enjoy it immediately, right? I, I know I'm definitely not a fan of a long setup or finding out you need batteries to enjoy your gift when you have none. That's like really stinky, right? There's so many reasons to love Aura Digital Frames, but honestly, the easy setup might be my favorite. Uh, but for real though, like when I gave my dad a birthday gift one time and I found out that I had like the completely wrong battery, it ruined Christmas. Uh, he stopped talking to me. It broke up the family. It was terrible. But Aura Frames is here to fix that. All you have to do is set up your frame, is download the Aura app for free. It takes no time at all. Then you have to, you can just preset the Wi-Fi on the frame and upload pictures beforehand. 
You can add photos and videos, invite as many people as you want to add to the frame. Plus there's absolutely no hidden fees or subscriptions. I've been using my aura frame for a while. We've got family pictures from people I haven't even met yet sending their photos up over and it's pretty cool because it's like meeting them through my picture frame so all your parents grandparents sisters aunts uncles cousins second cousins stepbrothers or whoever else has to do the unboxing they just got to plug it in and enjoy their photos it's that simple it's a very fun process so see for yourself why aura frames is named the number one digital picture frame by wire cutter the strategist wired uh, and is recommended by fast company the wall street journal and forbes uh or is pretty great so visit auraframes.com today and get $30 off their best-selling frame with the code tails t-a-l-e-s this frame is going to sell it quick they're getting very popular so get yours before they're gone that's aura a-u-r-a frames.com with the promo code tails t-a-l-e-s terms and conditions apply Today's episode is sponsored by Misty Mountain Gaming. Misty Mountain Gaming Dice Company has an incredible catalog of dice and all sorts of materials like stone, resin, glass, and metal. And they also have tons of specialty sets like their Ragnar's Bone Dice Set, Legends of Valhalla Hollow Metal Dice Set, Elder Runes Blackout Metal Dice Set, and more. Their dice are perfect for any RPG like Dungeons & Dragons, Pathfinder, Shadowrun, Savage World, math games, or anything else you can think of. Uh, even if you're, you know, doing craps. I don't know. Is that a bad word? Who's to say? Misty Mountain Gaming has new dice sets monthly, making it the biggest selection on the web. And they're the only dice company that offers a lifetime warranty on all sets of dice, including stone and glass sets. You ever heard of that? Dice uh, with warranties? I don't think so. But you can with Misty Mountain Gaming. They also have tons of gaming accessories like leather bags, leather books, dice trays, miniatures, and more. Seriously, the dice are beautiful. Uh, we got sent a few to try out ourselves, and oh, they, they're beautiful. The sound of them rolling across the table as you get a nat 20. Ooh la la. Magnifique. Uh, our friends at Misty Mountain have an exclusive offer for our listeners. That's you. So just go to MistyMountainGaming.com and use code STINKYDRAGON for a free acrylic dice set of your choice when you spend $20 or more. I'm just now finding out this information as I'm reading this. That's a really, that's a really good deal. So uh, yeah, go to MistyMountainGaming.com. Use code STINKYDRAGON for a free acrylic dice set when you spend $20 or more. This is a great deal. Next sponsor is... An oldie but a goodie. It's me, Undies. Gifting is no brainer in this holiday season thanks to the unmatched comfort and style of me, Undies. From all undies and bralettes to socks and loungewear, MeUndies is the perfect gift for yourself or anyone else on your list, even those hard to gift people. You know the ones I'm talking about. Your dad, he's hard to get for. Just give him some underwear, he'll love it. They even have a holiday gift guide that makes it all super easy. I've been with MeUndies for a while now. I don't work for them. They've just been sending me stuff and I buy from them and uh, it's very comfortable. It's super soft and I've never had any complaints and I've also had some of their pajama pants and Google. Nothing beats a cozy Sunday with us and me and these pants. Me and seriously is something for everyone from their wide selection of prints to their inclusive sizing. You can find a flattering cut for every body. Uh, not to mention their signature fabric is as soft as a warm hug from your favorite sweater or your favorite blame. It's breathable, stretchy, and oh so comfy, making it ideal all day wear. Plus they use sustainably sourced materials and work of partners that care for their workers. That's a pretty good brag. I like that. And if you're not happy with your first pair of undies, there's no stress. It's on me, undies. They'll take care of it. So knock out your holiday shopping today and get 20% off your first order plus free shipping at meundies.com slash stinky. Uh, that's unrelated. Stinky is the name of our show. Meundies is not stinky unless you make it stinky. But that's on you. Uh, once again, that's meundies.com slash stinky for 20% off plus free shipping. Meundies, comfort from the outside in. I assume Lewis is the giant. You you would presume so. I presume like he's talking about himself in yeah, the third person. Yeah, I don't know if it was the third person thing. Or, uh, 19. He's like talking about his 19. boss. 19. 11. There's no beating you guys' initiative, so I'm just going to stick with my four. Uh, my kid. dex is 18. Christopher? My dexterity is 15. Okay. Okay. So surveying the situation, Matid, you are first to uh, jump into action after Matid is Barney. So Lewis has lobbed a bunch of icy debris yeah, like gravel and cobblestone, stuff that he's broken up from uh, the courtyard. And it's heading towards people or is Amy for a straight child. at a child. But what's the child? An incorporeal citizen of Parish? Like, what do you mean? Yeah, so like... Like, are all the citizens in Parish yeah, incorporeal? It seems overwhelmingly so. Okay. So okay. all undead. 
can Matid put themselves between the debris and the child? Ooh, like a flash, Matid's heroism takes over. Yeah, you can try that. And can I use my deflect missiles ability? Oh, why not? Sure. So I use deflect missiles. So I basically, I reduce the damage by 1d10 plus my dex modifier plus my monk level. And if I reduce the damage to zero, I can catch the missile and I can, yeah, I can spend a key point to make a ranged attack with the uh, ammunition. Sure, why not? So go ahead and roll a d10 and add your dex modifier and monk level to it. Then that's four plus dex modifier is four plus my level is six. So that's 14. 14, yeah. So you're able to uh, reduce it to zero. So the gravel and small stones are flying at the child. Matid flies Ah. over very quickly, interjects himself between the incoming debris and the child and catches it. And then I can spend a key point and I can make a ranged attack. I make it with proficiency. Yeah. Yeah. What does that mean if I make it with proficiency? It treats it like a weapon you're proficient with as, a, as opposed to a oh. weapon you're not proficient with. So you can add your proficiency bonus to it. Treat it like any other weapon that you would normally have access to to attack with. Okay. Could I then just basically treat this like my sling of sandstorms? <laughs> 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 I was like, I know he wants to. <laughs> <laughs> Do the intro. Yes, you can, as long as it doesn't add any, like, to hit modifiers or bonus damage to it. And yeah, your sling of sandstorms does. So then what, what do I need to roll? So you would roll a d20 and add a seven to it if it's a weapon you're proficient with. Okay, okay, gotcha. That's what all my other stuff is. Mm-hmm. 15? That, that hits. And then what do I roll for the damage? The damage roll is the original weapon damage dice or martial arts monk weapon damage dice plus dexterity or strength. So in this case, we're going to do the original weapon damage die plus, since it's range, uh, we'll say plus your dexterity modifier. Plus four. So then it's normally a d10 damage. So roll a d10 and add four. Nine total. Not too shabby. It's like that uh, action movie trope where you throw yourself in front of it in front of the incoming rocks and you know it looks like it hits you and you spin around yeah. uh, midair and then just like redirect the energy right back where it came from but it is very elegant because Matid moves like a dancer yes hitting the frost giant for nine points of bludgeoning damage the frost giant roars angrily could we tell if it's like susceptible to anything but fire probably fine on your turn I'll let you make a roll to figure that out okay so then if I if that was uh, it counts as my reaction what does that leave me left to do in my turn you still have all of your regular actions okay and bonus actions okay that's what I thought I just don't have a reaction until my next turn correct and so you cannot take an attack of opportunity for example because that's a reaction I think I will anyways if I want to <laughs> no no <laughs> putting my foot down John actually <laughs> I'll go in for a unarmed strike I'll go into attack and I actually want to spend a key point and do make it a stunning attack. Stunning okay. strike. So do I roll to see if I make the attack first before you see if it stuns? Correct. Okay. Because the attack needs to connect and actually hit before it can proc any uh, abilities. Okay. I'm going to do it. Actually, I'm going to do it with, I'm not, not an unarmed strike. I'm going to do it with my spear of the superior baker. Okay. Because it has a higher. Oh. I love the name of that weapon. 13. That does not hit. Ooh. I'm going to do it again. Man, 14. No, that hits. Okay. Nice. Then that's a stun strike, so it's a con saving throw of 14 or else they're stunned. Constitution saving throw. Get a plus four. 14. If it matches, does it? It, it, it makes it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, it still takes damage. Okay. Some cheeky little damage. You baddie. 10. Damage. You can think of the saving throw number as like the target you need to hit. 10 points of damage. Got it. 10 points of damage. And I'll just do another unarmed strike. Okay. Wait, can I do flurry of blows? Immediately after you attack uh, action on your turn, you can spend one key point to make two unarmed strikes as a bonus action. Yep, that's what that is. Heck yeah. So I'm just going to keep hitting. Ooh, that's a 25. you going to take damage. 25, yep, that hits. Does believe not it or like not. like that this is attacking creatures that are similar to Matid. Mm. Is that this correct? Five points of damage from your flurry of blows. Oh, that's not going to hit. That's 11. That is not. Okay. Matid has done 15 things and has decided they're done. <laughs> Sweet. Uh, Matid goes to sleep. Yeah, Matid goes to sleep. Takes a long rest. Hours down. All right. That's it for Matid's turn. So it's Barney after Barney is the frost giant and then Elga. So looking at the frost giant, can I get any sense of like if it's 
the frost giant like is evil or has ill intent or is just confused like like uh, is that like an insight thing or interesting I mean, it mm. did it did have a, a bellowing retort at the top of the interaction yeah of not liking ghosts roll for vibe check <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah making let's call it a wisdom check barney wisdom it's not insight <laughs> no, insight's more like if someone's lying. Gotcha. Wisdom, I'm thinking like you're drawing on your personal experiences yeah. throughout your life gotcha, to know gotcha. what you, to see what you know. Could you say that maybe could Chris perceive? <laughs> <laughs> what, are we, what, what are we laughing at? <laughs> That's a ten. Based on things you know from your past, you know that typically frost giants can be considered to be evil beings. Broadly, you know, <laughs> he's From, an old he's an old man. Listen, he uh, times yeah. were different when he was young. <laughs> Generalization about frost giants. And from my knowledge of frost giants, they're not Which a celestial, that? elemental, fey, or f- a fiend. No. Okay. No. no. Just curious. Yeah. Just, just. They're from this plane. No okay. reason. No reason at all. Just, he's just, just being curious. thorough. He's just writing his entry into his journal. The little girl. She's okay. What's she doing? I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank uh, you the for one, asking. Yeah, the one that Matid saved. Yeah, she begins running off away from uh, danger. So she's out of she's out of it. Okay. Yeah. And that little girl was also incorporeal, right? Yes. Okay. She floated away. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> then is is a humanoid in the, the sense that yeah. you know it's got like a head and two arms and two legs. If you're asking for like a, if it's a spell that affects humanoids, it's yes. not in that. No, it's like it, it's it's category. Its category gotcha. is giant. Gotcha. Okay. Sorry for all the questions. Just trying to. No, that's well, it's helpful that's for me because I was looking <laughs> at something that affected humanoids. Dear diary. <laughs> <laughs> I learned a lot today. Yes. Homework. All right. Well, then Barney casts spirit guardians. I call for spirits to protect me. And they, they fit around and they go around 15 feet around me. They're spinning around, going crazy. What do they look like? They look like little Barneys. Oh, cute. Oh. Lots of little Barneys. <laughs> oh, horror. Really fun. Ah! And I can designate any number of creatures that are unaffected by it that I can see. And I'm going to choose my party, little girl, and any other townspeople who seem chill. <laughs> Do you think the Ark of the Covenant had spirit guardians? <laughs> just, just a bunch of geriatrics with walkers going around, <laughs> melting Nazis. <laughs> <laughs> Little Indiana Jones reference there. If you're not sure what that is, ask yeah. your parents. <laughs> How close am I to the giant? From where you all came in, let's let's call it 15 feet. Okay. Well, then, yeah. So I get one. No, 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 no. They don't mess with you. An affected creature's speed is oh. half in the area, and when the creature enters the area for the first time or starts its turn in there, it must take a wisdom saving throw. On a failed save, the creature takes 3d8 radiant damage. Oh, this is the one that surrounds you. Yeah. yeah. And if they are near you and you have this, it procs. On a successful save, the creature takes half as much damage. Okay. So I'm going to do that, and does it take damage now? Is that since it just popped up? Uh, there's a roll, right? I think it's on its turn. What did it say in there? When the creature enters the area for the first time on a turn or starts its turn there. Yeah, so I think it's on its turn. Okay. okay. Well, I'll do that and Which chill. Which is next, right? Yeah, and I'm making a note here, but also remind me in case I don't do it, Chris. Well, you're about to do it unless Barney has a bonus action Barney wants I to do. I do have a bonus action. Whoa! Whoa! But I was you wondering. You a bonus action? When would you get that? I was wondering. <laughs> I'm excited. Can I, like, ready a bonus action like you ready an action? Or does it have to be used? Typically, it has to be used. Like, readying a bonus action, that would be like a reaction. You know, like we said, attack of opportunity, for example. Mm. Mm. Okay, well, I'm going to go up to this big ice dude so that I'm within <laughs> its attack of opportunity. Mm. And Barney licks the ice giant just to see. Yeah. No, that's right. That went gum gum. <laughs> and just to be clear, because of, because of what you, you, the way you phrase that, I want to make sure you know. Only some actions can be taken as a reaction. So if you're trying to plan to do something that's listed as bonus action, that doesn't work as a reaction. Unless it explicitly says reaction. Just FYI. Yeah, yeah, but I got a thing. Okay, okay. I don't know what you're planning. I don't know what you're doing, but I'm just throwing that out there. Okay. You're also helping chip out because sneak attack. Yeah. Right, if people are close to it. Yeah, Matid's also close to Matid got up in uh, melee range. So I say, oh, no, don't go so close. Oh, oh dear. Don't stand so 
close to me. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Thank you, Barbara. And I'm done. All right. Woo! It's the Frost Giant's turn, and the Frost Giant needs to make a save for Spirit Guardian. That is a DC 17 wisdom save, it looks like. Yes. Let's see how wise it is. Ooh, plus one. That's not good. So I need to roll a 16 or better. I rolled a 17. Damn. That's Aww. 18. So that's a save. Okay, so, so half it damage. takes half radiant damage. Half radiant damage. So I rolled eight. So it takes four points of radiant four, damage. And its movement speed is half. Ah. That's the most annoying part of that spell. It's kind of like when someone takes a, you know, a Polaroid picture of you and you're not expecting it. And they say, cheese. And you, oh, <laughs> radiant damage. And then you can't really see anything for a few minutes because mm -hmm. you have those little spots in your That's eyes. Right. Yeah, it's really trouble. Radiant damage. Serious. I don't show up in pictures. <laughs> that Some is facts. so sad. I don't know why. The frost giant roars in anger. <laughs> no. Yeah. It's okay. Uh, Barney, you're up there too, right? You said yeah. you got within melee range. He's in its face. Yeah, he doesn't like that you've got those circling Barney spirits all around you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> hurting it. It's like, it's spicy and it's slowing it down. So uh, it, you know, takes its pickaxe and takes a swing at you, Barney. Oh. Hitting AC 11. Ooh. Eight misses. Nice. Yeah. Does Barney have a high or low armor class? It, it's pretty high. Because he, uh, he has like a chainmail. Yeah. So damn, does that thing have plus nine? Yeah, it does. Because wow. the chainmail is what gives you yeah, disadvantage yeah. That's why stuff. That's disadvantage yeah, stuff. Okay. Yeah. Is yours higher than mine or, or what's yours at? I think his is 18. Mine's got to be higher. We're both 18. Yeah. No, oh. I'm 17. I'm 17. I'm 17. Yeah, clerics typically get beefy armor. That's what I figured. My HP isn't that great. Mine's worse than yours. Mine's pretty good. The giant again roars in uh, wow. frustration. It's okay. And anger. <laughs> it doesn't like that you're talking to it, Barney. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna be real honest. You're kind of egging it on, so it throws <laughs> it throws a, uh, some rocks at you. You speak your truth, Barney. Again, AC eleven. Oh, they're all sharp. <sighs> I have a plus nine on both of those attacks, and I rolled a two twice in a row. I like to imagine that the, the rocks come flying at Barney, but he's got like all this plate armor on and stuff, and he just he he doesn't dodge it. It just bonks off of it. Yeah, that, <laughs> <laughs> that very well could be what's happening. Unfazed, just saying, it's okay. <laughs> oh, it's raining. Try it. Yeah. <laughs> Elga, you're up, followed by Chip. So does it stay in it, it stay in the... Yeah, it stays in uh, the area where it is, in the area effect of the Spirit okay. Guardians. All right, so a D&D &D question. What? Here? Now? I know. In this economy? Inappropriate. So I have a potion of growth. Does okay. that oh, no. increase any of like my attacks or strengths or like does it what's the benefit of being bigger? Be like a strength modifier? So a potion of growth is the equivalent of like having a large person cast upon you. I like to think that Elga thinks it's gonna make her into like a full grown woman, but instead it's just a larger version of a child. It's just like a <laughs> giant <laughs> child. So it doubles your size in all dimensions, it increases your weight by eight. And you go from one size category to the next one up. Elga is medium, I believe. Is she? Or is Elga small? I think she's medium. Uh, I think I think <laughs> technically you're you're medium, but anyway, you go the next size up regardless. Okay. Which comes with like carrying capacity and stuff like that. Right. So you get advantage on strength checks and saving throws, and your weapons also grow to match your new size, and you deal an additional one d4 of extra damage with them. Guess what's going down the pipe? <laughs> <laughs> And Elga chugs the potion of growth that she has in her inventory. Whoa, 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 whoa. What we don't see is Elga like mixes like a little bit of blood from her sippy cup and then kind of like <laughs> like a <laughs> martini like shaker does it. <laughs> One moment. Yeah. <laughs> she definitely does that. She also then takes a little sip of her a sippy cup. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. She, the, not the blood that she spilled on herself. So, to, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. like an alcoholic, but with blood. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody look. <laughs> All right, so now I'm big. Yeah, Elga big. Wow. Oh, Roy. <laughs> She's Swelga. Oh, oh, that's so good. I like it. You're going down, giant beast. I don't know how to do my voice, but deeper. <laughs> it's just Barbara sticking her lips out as oh, far as possible. Just, oh, <laughs> oh, Elga. Uh, how far away am I from it? You can just talk normal, and Micah will pitch it down. See there. Oh, yeah. You're still where <laughs> everyone kind of came in and first saw everything going on, so you're about 15 feet east. Okay, I am going to get up closer to the beast, to the giant, I mean. Uh, the beast has a name. Lewis. Lewis. I'm going to get up close to Lewis. I'll stay, like, out of Barney's uh, area of effect. It, 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 doesn't, it affect doesn't affect you. you. Doesn't affect it doesn't affect you? doesn't affect because I chose... Okay, I'll get it right up on him, like, five feet off. Yep. Melee attack range. Do you guys range. see that? Elga is right up on the giant. 
And uh, I feel like the name of this axe is appropriate to use right now. I will use my great axe of gaining. Ooh, yeah. get those gains. And I will give it a slicey slice. Tiagaga. Wow. I'm just doing Micah's job for him. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> it was a 14. A 14 does hit. But do you, okay, so I don't need to add anything. Nope. Okay. And that, oh, I forgot to rage. Would the potion be a bonus action? Well, I'll, I'll give you the potion for free. So Thank you, you. I'll, and I'll say you, you raged. Okay. If, if you, if you wanted to rage, I'll say you did. Yes, I wanted to rage. God's Sorry, make a, I'm still learning. Make a quick wisdom check for me too. Okay. Oh, what's a four? Okay, never mind. What? With your plus one on wisdom? I know. <laughs> Weird. I'm surprised I have a plus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I'm raging, and I just used my great axe of gaining, and it hit for a 14. Yep, and did. And did 13 points of damage plus two because of my rage. So, that so would plus. 15 plus a d4. 15 plus a d4 that I have to roll, three. Nice. So 18, so 18. points of slashing damage. Yes. Is Elka going to do it again? Do you like how... How that felt, Louis? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> Can you take this survey? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, guess what? Because it's coming at you again. Yeah. 16. That hits. Nice. Doing 17 plus 2. That's 19 plus another D4. Good damage. Some real good damage. 22. 22. <laughs> nice. Points of damage. Slashing. It's time to make ice cubes out of you. <laughs> right, guys? Elgo looks back. <laughs> With the dry, cool wit like that, you could be an action hero. <laughs> Matid is nodding, trying to support Elga. Thank you, Matid, my biggest fan. <laughs> <laughs> the giant looks at you with fury and anger in its eyes. But straight, right? Because I'm at the same height of it. Well, you're not quite. A giant is giant. giant. Like it's even bigger. No, no, yeah. Sure you're but, a giant. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but still, uh, it, it doesn't have to look down as far as it normally would have. Mm. Guys, the weather is kind of different up here. Yeah. <laughs> Are you getting enough oxygen up there, Elga? Oh, a little lightheaded. <laughs> Just as tall as Matid and probably you know, at this point. I'm imagining that Elga looks like the toddler in Honey, I, sh I oh. Grew Up a Baby. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. When it's not uh, full, yeah. like, Las Vegas destruction size, it's just in that big old, like, playpen he builds in the bedroom. It's like adult height, but still baby proportion. It just feels like weird force perspective. It's Elga just, looks like the baby. Yeah. From uh, Spirited Away. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Anything else, Elga? Nope. Okay. That's it for Elga. So we got Chip after Chip. chip. We chip. got a couple chip. of NPCs. Chip. They were chip. back from Matid. Chip. NPCs. Chip. Uh, <laughs> how, how, chip. 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 How's the uh, uh, ice giant look? How is Lewis looking? Very strong. Very swole. Handsome. I can't do a perception <laughs> check or anything to see. Oh, yeah. Make a perception yeah, okay, check. Okay, okay, okay. He wants to perceive. Let me perceive you, Lewis. That's a 14. Yeah, you think that it's still looking, <laughs> metagame-wise, it's closer to full than to empty. Ah, glass half full. Kind more of, than, more than half guy. full. Oh, uh, very optimistic. Very good. Um, what, with the four radiant damage that Barney did? <laughs> four! <laughs> okay, I run up, and since I have a bunch of people that are close to it within five feet, that means that I... Everybody's close to it. Yeah, get to use sneak attack. Ooh, hoo, hoo. Ooh la la, <laughs> as they say in Pyreish. <laughs> I'm going to use the arm blade of Blurbling. Blurble Gerbil. Blurble Gerbil. Blurble Gerbil to you. That's a 17. Oh, that hits? Great. So I'm going to roll damage for that. It is a three. Whoa, calm down here. Yeah, I know, right? I can barely uh, keep up. a one. It's, oh, yeah, I guess it, yeah. Well, is is D8 or D10 or something. Chip, chip, he's our man. Uh, I, I don't feel like it right now. A sneak attack also gives me the 3d6 damage, so I'm going to roll that too. Yeah. And hopefully this is going to be a little bit better. Three, 18. Three, three, 18. Three, three, 12. Uh, boo. You could have at least split the difference with me. So that's there's that. And uh, I got an idea. Ooh. Play with me in this space, will you? I want to <laughs> I, I grab the giant's hand and make it hit me. Hit me! Hit me! I've, I've tried it. Or, or is it is it pokey? Lewis? Yeah, does Lewis have any pokies? Well, in one hand, you know, he's got uh, that pickaxe. woman. And in the other hand, he has the pickaxe. So you're grabbing his hand and, like, trying to hit yourself. With it. I mean, I, I will say, I'll say this. You're going to have to make a strength check to do that, but you're going to have disadvantage because it's a giant. It's like super, super strong. I'll take those odds. Okay. What All are right. you trying to do? Yo, just, just play hide and watch. I have just no idea. I'm trying to. I'm trying to play into it. Maybe he's gonna go on fire. 
All right, that's a uh, that's a uh, okay. Twenty two right Ooh, now. You rolled a nat okay. twenty. But this is what a disadvantage. Next one is. Uh, five. Uh, it's worth the lucky. It's worth the lucky. I'm gonna reroll. Do it. Do it. It doesn't matter. Do that it. was an eight, but with a lucky, I get to choose. So I choose the nat twenty. Oh, right. oh. That's, that's part of being lucky. Right. You get ah. to choose which one. Yeah. So I mean, I I really was so gonna, we're gonna not give you this, but. <laughs> A 20 is pretty much an automatic success. Yeah. So if you pick the 20, it has to work. So yeah, you somehow grab, I assume you grab his hand that has the axe and not the hand that has the woman. Uh, which was going to hurt. I thought the woman ran away. No, no that was a, girl. a child oh. ran away. Yeah. yeah I just sure. want to point out, you used a lucky to hit yourself. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's going to play out. It's going to be great. You're okay. going to love it. Okay. You're going to like the way you look. look. <laughs> You're going to like the way this looks. I guarantee it. Chip's uh, warehouse. Let's say the one with the weapon, since you're trying to hit yourself with well, it. Well, I don't want to kill myself. Well, the, the weapon doesn't hit you, just like the fist, the closed fist yes. that's around the weapon. Yes, that's what I do. How like how hard do you pull it? Do you pull it hard enough to damage yourself, or like just to just a little bit, just, just a little damage? All right, I'll roll a d6 because, like I said, it is big. Guys, I think we need to send Chip to therapy. <laughs> I rolled a six. <laughs> oh, oh. I kind of like what he's doing. <laughs> you hit yourself. Stop hitting yourself uh, <laughs> for six points of damage with the. <laughs> a frost giant's closed I, fist. Ah, Louis! Oh, how could you have done this? Ha ha, got you, fell in my trap. Hellish Rebuke. <laughs> uh, Hellish Rebuke, it's a reaction which you take in response to being damaged by a creature within 60 feet of you. You play your trap card. That's right. I point my finger and the creature is damaged, momentarily surrounded by hellish flames. And it's a frost giant. So this is, this is you're going to have a bad day, Louis. Heckish flames, remember? We're talking about Chip Haney oh here. Oh, my God. Don't tell oh. my mama. Don't tell my mama. <laughs> Guys, hey, Pinky promised not to tell. Matisse holds out the jar you have to pay into. <laughs> Chip's mom appears in the cloud like uh, Mufasa yeah. in the Lion King. <laughs> now, Chip. <laughs> okay, so. What do you roll for that? The creature has to make a dexterity saving throw. Well, yeah, I do 3d10. Is it half if it doesn't do a dex? Yeah, half as much uh, if I succeed on a saving throw. What's the DC? It is 15. 15. 15. Yeah. I have. Plus four, so I need an 11 or better. Okay. 12, that's a 16. I don't that's like that. Reroll it. Lucky. Oh. <laughs> I knew that was coming. <laughs> 11 or better is not hard. Eight, so that's yeah. a 12. Yeah. So it's better than 11. So it made it. No. No, it failed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you need to roll. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chaos chip. <laughs> uh, okay, so then it gets the, the, the full... This... Uh, Tiefling is fully armed and fully operational. 310 fire damage. 22. That's pretty good. 22. A fire damage, specifically. Yeah. Take that, frost giant. <laughs> the, you know, the the fire begins en engulfing it. The, the, it's flames that shoot from your finger. Is that right? Uh, you point your finger, and the creature that damaged you is momentarily surrounded by hellish flames. I think heckish. it's just heckish. God, I don't tell my mama. <laughs> uh, I think I think I just I just point. You point at it, and, and then it just goes flames. Yeah, yeah. It begins surrounding the giant, and uh, it looks like it, it damages the giant, but he he like kind of swats it off. It seems like a little prematurely, like it didn't fully um, engulf him as much as you would have expected it to. So the flames didn't seem to... It hurt the giant, but it wasn't like the big kaboom, the big earth-shattering kaboom you were expecting. So it didn't seem particularly... I always need my big earth-shattering kaboom. <laughs> That's pretty Thank good. You. It's Martian Manhunter. Mar Martian? Nope. Ma oh my God. Marvin. Marvin the Martian. Marvin the Martian. Mar Marvin the Martian Manhunter. Yeah. <laughs> Marvin's my favorite member of the Justice League. <laughs> Okay, anything else, Chip? Oh, hey there. Uh, yeah, oh, I, I have a bonus. Can I use that still? Was Hellish Rebuke your bonus? No, that's, that's a, reaction. a reaction. So. Oh, then yeah. He, he, he. And then I'm going to do a, uh, you know, I, uh, quite, I don't even have that many things and I always get lost in my own abilities. I'm just going to do that thing where I hide. Cutting action. He, he, he. <laughs> All right. You do your best to smoke bomb disappear. Yeah. Okay. Is that it? I'm, I'm good. Yeah. That's fun. That was a good, good turn, everybody. Great job all around. You too, Lewis. <laughs> Way to go, team. Okay. The woman that Lewis is holding begins, you know, screaming for help even more so. You all take a look at her, you know, you know maybe more closely because she's yelling now. And it's a young lady dressed in a lotus patterned purple dress. She is not having a good day. Aww. But it seems to get the attention of the headless horseman who, uh, you know, is looking at her and looking at the frost giant. And, you know, he turns to the party and says, I will concentrate on the girl. 
Oh. Don't kill her! <laughs> <laughs> he runs up and begins seeming to try to uh, distract the frost giant and persuade Lewis to let her down. And <laughs> it, it seems really bizarre to see, but he takes off his own head and launches it at the frost giant. Ooh. So he's just completely headless? He throws the, what is it, the jack-o'-lantern? Right. Yeah. It's made of fire. I'm resistant to that. <laughs> it's AC 26. Wow. Doing 17 points of damage. Fire damage. Ooh. And he throws his, um, you know, his own head at the frost giant, and it explodes into uh, a big, like, flare-up of fire. And then the head seemingly, like, ma- well, it is magic, reappears, flies back to um, the headless horseman's hand, and he puts it back on his head. How often does he have to replace that head? Does he got to, like, carve a new pumpkin head? So is it like a boomerang? Well, it's not a boomerang because, you know, you would picture a boomerang, like, goes out in a big arc and, like, comes back. This yeah. went out, like, exploded, did its damage, and then just, like, went straight back. Like Matisse's wheat spear. Oh, yeah. 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 Very similar to that. Can I perceive if sometimes he switches it up and does something fun, like like a watermelon? <laughs> or, like, he makes his head real small with a little apple? <laughs> or one of those little baby pumpkins? No, no, baby <laughs> oh, pumpkins. Yeah. They, they run out of the normal size ones at the pumpkin patch. Oh, can we do a piece of corn? Oh, or a pineapple? Oh, let's go. Hey, let's go beach episode, everybody. I could also name other types of food. That <laughs> <laughs> very, very uh, normal things. Blood orange. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's it for him. We're back up to the top, it's Matid and then Barney. This fool's still going? Yeah. This fool's still going? Okay. Man, I, f- I thought, like, for sure he would be down by now. I know. I blew all my good stuff on him. <laughs> <laughs> Two luckies and a thing. Yeah, okay. I'll do a stri- I'll just do an attack with, hmm. Yeah, I guess I'll do it with my spear, the superior baker. And I'm just gonna be stabbing at this, just like ice picking this thing, just just getting stuff out. <laughs> it's literally an ice. Working picking. out some stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just filling up my glass. All right. That's a twelve. Ooh, that does not hit. But I'm gonna do it again. What are you lucky? Nope. I'm just really cool. I got a seventeen this that time. That hits. Okay. I'm gonna go roll damage on that. That's ten points of damage. Of stabby. Okay. Ten points of stabby damage from the spear. I want to make that a stun strike as well. Ooh. What does that entail? Con saving throw fourteen. All right, I have plus four on this. I need a ten or better. Don't do it. Ooh, that's a four. Yeah, nice. you stunned. Excellent. Yeah, the uh, your stunning strike hits the uh, frost giant, who begins stumbling backwards away from the blow, but he seems to kind of shake it off and uh, seems to like shake off the uh, the stunning effect. Mm. He stumbles backwards. He like how far is it? Like an attack of opportunity? <laughs> Just like a step or two. Like he's getting his feet under. Mm, when so he when not. he goes okay. back, does he go whip 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 whip? whip. Is that, is that the noise that it <laughs> no. makes? No. Could I do a check, actually? Because this guy's he 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 shirked off the heckish rebuke. He's he's not. Thank even, you for calling it that. Yes, that's what it's called, Gus. Yeah, okay. make a make a wisdom check. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that. He's yeah. super powered. That's only a cheeky little nine. Just really strong, really really beefy. Well, the fact that we damaged him that much and he's still there's gotta I be don't some. Believe him, there's gotta be some weakness. Right? I think there's something peculiar about this giant. When it when we get around to your turn, can you guys check as well? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's teamwork. Yeah, cool. Then I'm just gonna hit it again. Cause that's what I do. I kick it. That's what they do. I'm kicking it and rolling. Bad rolls today. Nine. No, oh, no good. But this one's gonna be great. Cause it's, oh, it's an eleven. Mm-mm. That misses. Three whiffs. That's a uh, oof. Jikes. Not a good metid round. That's so why you gotta get to lucky feet. I already have lucky feet. I have two right here. Oh, <laughs> hey, you're so silly. Well, then I'm done. I got nothing else to do. I just, I just trying to hit it and trying to check to see why this guy was so special. That's okay, champ. You he did, seems you a little a special. Job. He's, a, for effort, he's a special giant. Yeah, just like you. <laughs> you're my little special giant. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Barney, you're up. Then the frost giant. Then Elka. So this lady, what's she doing? She's just chilling up there screaming. Yeah, you know, like remember, like in King Kong, he picks up someone and she's like screaming. Yeah, Barney, that check kind of out stuff. the giant. Something's weird about it. Can I look into the giant's soul? Yeah, make a soul searching check, uh, which is a wisdom check. Okay. Hmm. 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 Oh. You think that it's possible? You've encountered, you know, in your many adventures and, you know, throughout your long life, you've you've heard tale of creatures that can become so powerful that 
a limited number of times a day they can almost change their luck. They can uh You gave the giant luck. Oh no, 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 no. Not it's not I'm not it's not the lucky feat, but it can conjure up almost like a extra strong will and overcome things that would normally harm it. How many times? A few times a day, mm. typically. <laughs> How obnoxious. I hate the lucky feet. <laughs> this is the worst. I don't think it's the luck. It's not lucky, right? Something. Some sort of luck based. So uh, like pe- peeling back the curtain a little bit. This is a standard D&D thing. And I know sometimes maybe our listeners don't know a lot about Dungeons and Dragons. Or the people playing this or game. The, the people. <laughs> sometimes if you have a powerful creature, they can have something called legendary resistance. And it allows them a couple times a day. If they fail a saving throw, they can just choose to succeed instead. Oh, I actually have that too. Do you? Okay. I've just decided right now. Oh, I was going to be like, awesome. <laughs> so yeah, so it, even if it fails a uh, saving throw, it just succeeds a limited number of times a day. Hmm. Real cut and dry. Why are you doing that right now? What's the, what's the point? I'm trying to win. I'm trying to I'm trying to TPK. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> That's that's what people don't realize is that Gus has to lose constantly. Yeah, it's really getting so to me. Probably need to start doing more things that involve less saving throws, I guess. Well, I have a question about the space of this thing. How big is it? Is there like a twenty foot radius in which I could center a spell on the giant but not hit other people? Like, is it that big, you know? The problem is that some of your party members are also close. I'm trying to see a way you could position it and not hit them. You can hit me. No, just because of the bystanders as well. Okay. There's really not... You could, I mean, you could hit a couple bystanders, right? No, 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 no. You must hit. No, no, no. All right. Well... I'm just going to cast Lemon's Tiny Hut. No, I'm just uh. <laughs> Please, God, no. I'm just going to do what, like a guiding bolt or something. Yeah, I'm going to do my guiding bolt at third level spell. Whoa. That's one more than second level. And I'm going to cast it now. That's good. That's a good time to cast a spell. 15. <laughs> that nice. And I'm casting it. Dice, go. <laughs> It's only 14. 6d6, and it's only 14. Oh, oh my gosh. You yeah. one I had three ones. Oh. Wow. Barney, you it's really okay, put the bet on that one, pal. But that? now. Oh, yes, but. Elda uh, has advantage on yeah, her attack. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, I do. The next attack roll against it will have advantage thanks to the mystical dim light glittering it. So just the, uh, the first attack, Elga yeah. makes. Now I'm yeah. sparkly and big. Wow. <laughs> no, he's sparkly and big. Uh, like Lady Liberty. And I have another thing I want to try and do. All right. Can I mm-hmm. try and mm-hmm. use my telekinetic shove to pull the woman out of the guy's hand? It's a shove. It's not a telekinetic pull. Well, no, 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 no. It is. As a bonus action, you, you can try to telekinetically shove one creature you see within three feet. When you do so, the target must succeed on a strength saving throw, DC 16, or be moved five feet toward or away from you. Oh, they should, they should rename that telekinetic move. Yeah, creature, I was say, yeah. you can't shove someone towards you. A creature can willingly fail the save, so the lady could choose to fit to, to do it, but I don't know if that how that factors in with him holding her. So. Yeah, the problem is that there is going to be a roll of some kind, just because yeah. if she was standing there of her own, yeah, of course, but she's being held by the giant. Mm. So it says the target must succeed on a strength saving throw, DC 8 plus your proficiency bonus plus the ability modifier of the score increased by this feat. It's got a DC saving throw. So it's a strength saving throw of 16, we'll call it. Mm -hmm. I feel like they're going to pass that no matter what you do, Barney. Might as well do it. I'm doing it. Yeah. It's a bonus action. What else do I have to lose? So DC 16, the giant has a plus seven, so I need a nine or better. The odds are not in your favor. I rolled a 20. Mm. 29. He grips her so hard her head pops <laughs> off. <laughs> it's like when you like almost stumble and you like you hold your drink a little tighter and yeah. just kind of squeeze out a little bit. Yeah, the frost giant, you know, tightens his grip and says, No, Katrina, mine. Oh, beautiful name. <laughs> Katrina. Okay. Katrina. And then, uh, you know, I guess that's it. But no, that's it. No, his turn happens and he's got to do the guardian. Oh, yeah, yeah, thing. yeah. But that's it for my turn. Oh, yeah. That, so now it's the frost giant's turn and it makes, does it make the save again or is it automatic? For no, the guardians. It has to make the save. Yeah, make it again. Uh, what is it again? Tell me. That's a wisdom saving throw of 17. Yeah. So uh, I have a plus one. So I need a 16 or better. Low roll, low roll. Gus is smiling no matter what. He's passing this. <laughs> yeah. Seven. So that's an eight. 
So yeah, roll your damage. Somehow the ice giant yeah. still gets to roll. It seems to be yeah. interesting. Mm. Seventeen, roughly half of seventeen. The spirit guardians of Barney Farney begin circling the <laughs> uh, the frost giant, but he he does kind of swat at them a little bit, and he seems to kind of carve a path for himself through them. They're called spirit Farnians. Oh, mm-hmm. oh. I like that. <laughs> they're little Barney Farnies. They're they're Benny Finnies. Benny Finnies. Benny Finnies. Benny Finnies. It's a frost giant's turn. Lewis Smash! Who Lewis Smash? Tell me, little girl. Me? She not so little. Everyone little to Lewis. Are you calling me little? <laughs> yes. Hit me. Hit me. Try it. Sure, why not? Oh, by the way, I forgot to mention, and I'm sorry if it seems like I'm cheating by saying this, but when I raged, I took a uh, tail, form of the beast. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Let's see how that plays out. Bowl strategy. The frost giant focuses on Elga and swings its pickaxe at her, hitting AC 23. Well, when I have my tail, I could use that as a reaction. If a creature I could see within 10 feet, which is you, Mr. Uh, Lewis, hits you with an attack roll, you could use my reaction to swipe your tail and roll a D8 applying the bonus to your AC. Oh, what's your AC? 15. You'd have to roll a perfect. I'd have to roll an eight. Okay. Come on now, D. Eight! Oh! Oh! Yeah! Eat a butt, Lewis! Although, no, wait, it's even, though. So you still hit me, right? Oh, yeah, Matt. Dang! No! Oh, so it's dang, never mind. Oh. Okay, never mind. I, that, yeah, math. Still cool. Oh. Math is hard sometimes. Still cool. Elga used tailspin. It almost worked. It was okay. so close. Okay. So it still hits doing... And I'm raging, so I take half damage. On yes. She's this giant child with a tail fighting an ice giant. It's like watching kaiju. And there's nothing else odd about me whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> nothing. Ooh, 29 points of damage. But half. You take half of that because you're raging. So that would be 16? No. 15? 15? 14? 14. 14. We round down. Yeah, 14. 14. Okay. Mm, yeah, and it's going to take another swing at you. Okay, try it. Hitting AC 19. Tail. Can you react twice? I think, can you? So, no, you can't, but I would say, I I would assume if Barbara knew that roll was impossible, she wouldn't have made it uh, in the first no, place. That's, that's true. true. That is actually so true. Are you okay? For yeah, the, you, okay. Can, you can roll it. Now. Appreciate it. Gus is a generous god. So, what was uh, your... I rolled a six. So, you said... So, I hit 19. 19, so 15 plus six is 21. Yeah! So, yeah, your, your tail manages to swipe it out of the first way. First try! Yeah. Bring it back. Nailed it. Tailed it. <laughs> <laughs> tail no fair. I agree, I was no fair. <laughs> okay, Elga, it's your turn. Make me another wisdom check. Oh, nat 20, 21. There we go. Ooh. I was feeling powerful. Real powerful. You you recognize that fire in Lewis's eyes. What? I do. You know that anger. Nice try. <gasps> when it overcomes you and it empowers you. So he's raging. Mm, yeah, that's what, that's what you think. You, okay. You, you've had experience with this. So he's a barbarian of some sort? Maybe. Well, Is that what you're implying? He has the rage ability. He has, he has rage. Okay. Which means he's taking half, half damage. Half damage. Shut up, bummer. So you gave this guy legendary resistance and raging. Listen, we'll talk about it in second wind. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we are. We're going to talk about it. But it's I, only, I have words. It's only half damage when it's bludgeoning, piercing, slashing, yeah, so correct. not fire. A lot of my damage has been that. Yeah, same. So why did my fire heckish rebuke not Because he has legendary, legendary resistance. resistance. That's why I was, you, that's why I was using the legendary resistance uh, against the radiant damage and the fire over there, damage. Fella. Yeah, he's putting in cheat codes. Well, okay. So is it my turn now? Yeah, yeah. Elga, you're Hit it! Okay, Elga, not a big fan of you hitting her, even though she completely uh, provoked you and it was justified. Um, but I'm still mad about it. So I would like you to have a nice taste of uh, something in my inventory that I'm going to use right now. You have She's advantage. Talking her. I do have advantage? Yeah. On your first attack. On your first attack. Because um, of Guiding Bolt. So whatever you're about to do... Never mind, I'm going to use my great act of gaining. <laughs> Yes, slicey, slicey. That's a 28. Believe it or not, hits. You have advantage. You may as well roll it one more time to see if you okay. crit. that nat 20. Oh, no. 26. Okay. Right. Yeah, you hit. Okay. Doing 14 plus 2. 16, so 16. points of damage. Yep. Okay. And extra because I'm tall. Yep. You're big. A big. So another 2. So that would be 18. All right. Nice. But I assume he takes half of those. Mm, I don't know. That's for me to know. But I'm going to do it again. 15? Yeah, that hits. Hits. Doing... Ooh, ooh. 8 plus 2, so 10, 10 plus another d4. 12. 12 points of damage. Got it. And then as a bonus action, am I allowed to use 
oil of slipperiness as grease on the ground underneath the giant. Interesting. Looking it up. Because it's just like a thing I have in my inventory, so I don't know what it Yeah, you got it like in the maze, didn't you? I think so. So pouring it on the ground is takes an action. Oh, it is does. what it says. Okay. Yeah. Normally, you put it on like a, a creature or a piece of equipment, mm -hmm. and that you know creature gains what's called freedom of movement. But applying it in that manner takes ten minutes, so that's yeah. why they say pouring the oil on the ground takes an action. It can cover a ten gotcha. foot square. It's like having a grease spell. Gotcha. Yeah, we've been using it on uh, their Barney for his back massages at camp. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then I'm I'm done. Okay, because I don't uh, have an action left. It's a good turn. Yeah, with that, the frost giant kind of roars, lets out a loud bellow, and uh, drops Katrina and begins taking off running. It disengages uh, and begins running to the north. And the oh, crowd begins turn? cheering in celebration for you guys. Do we get a tax of opportunity on this? No, it disengages, Disengage. which is like a an ability to, to avoid gotcha. tax of opportunity. Can I try and catch Katrina? You try, but the Headless Horseman beats you to it very suavely oh. with his flying horse. What a Casanova. So I'm not surprised. Flies forward and catches Katrina. Everyone cheers. Yay! Drinks at the tavern! Woo! Yay! Well, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> the horseman leads Katrina inside into the tavern. You notice it now that you're not in the thick of battle, but there's a sign above the entrance that reads Tome Tavern. Tome? Tomb. Tomb Tavern. Sorry, I got... Blah, blah, blah. My, my tongue was dumb. Mm. So we enter a thing called Tomb Tavern. Yeah. Does he ride the horse in? Does Gaston, <laughs> that Gastalion come in with us? He does not ride the horse in. However, make me a perception check, Chip. Oh, okay. 13. You notice that the horseman leads Katrina into the tavern through a window. What is up with this guy using weird routes to get places? Wait, like as in they an open window yeah. and they climb in through the window. Correct. Or do they float is the horse, in? Is the horseman in corporal? Yeah. And are, are people going through the door? No, uh, all of the people, all of the Parisians are climbing in through the window. They're climbing in. There's a trap. They're not passing through. They're passing through, going and through the I window. And I do that too. When in Rome, go through walls. I also jump through the window. <laughs> it's not Rome, it's Parish. <laughs> Parish. <laughs> so mo just to clarify, not all of them are incorporeal, most of them. I okay. do it. And they're all, everyone is going through the window? Yes. I guess I'll do that too. I want to fit in and be very, you know, aware of your culture. And Elga, um, make a perception check. All of your ways of life. Lots of perception checks, Gus. Yeah. 13. You notice that there's no door. Oh. That has That's a... That's cool. Yep. <laughs> it's all windows. That's cool. Uh, do the windows actually open? Yes. Okay. He talks to their city planner. Yeah, you, you all, I assume everyone walks in? Yeah, and I cast Vision Planting. What? 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 Sorry. What? <laughs> and I, I was trying to say it fast, so it didn't take up a lot of time. And I cast Vigilant How Blessing, so I have advantage <laughs> on... Uh, uh, my next oh, initiative. Vigilant gotcha. blessing. Mm. You all climb in, and inside is a frigid stone-walled watering hole filled with spirits drinking gaseous spirits. The horseman and the young lady find a small private table by themselves in the corner, but something else catches your eye, or rather someone. Someone floating at the bar calls out, Hey, barkeep, pour me another. I swear I'm good for it. Even though she's floating above the ground, she still manages to stumble in the air while reaching for the glass of gas. She turns her decaying face to see if anyone noticed, and her hair hisses at the four of you. Oh. It's the mummy. Oh. Oh. Mummy's alive. Well, well, well. Or... or I, I just want to make a reference to a very, very old cartoon that no one remembers. Oh. <laughs> what cartoon? Mummy's Alive. Uh, <laughs> oh, wow. What, I, don't, I don't know that. Uh, it was during the 90s when they're like, what if we make anything a superhero like mummies? Wow. Okay. Uh, on that note, <laughs> find out what's going on with the mummy. They made 42 episodes of that. <laughs> find out what's going on with the mummy in the next episode of Tales of the Stinky Dragon. <laughs> <laughs> or if you want to know, just catch up on the 42 episodes. <laughs> yeah. Mummy's Alive. Mummy's Join alive. us in seven, uh, the second win where we talk about Mummy's Alive. Yeah. <laughs> Our companion podcast Our for companion. Mummy's Alive. <laughs> Only available for first members at stinkydragonpod.com. Yeah, slash is first. it worth it, baby? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Bye. <laughs> Bye. 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 Oh, hey, we're going to talk about first members. That's right. Did you know that you can directly support this show by subscribing at stinkydragonpod.com slash first? 
I didn't know that until just now. That's a lie. I actually knew that all along. Uh, superb little stinkers like Guacamole Pete, Hello Bliss. I'm gonna just butcher these names. Lil Vila, that's a fun name. Uh, it's a small world. <laughs> that's a cute name. Uh, and Ruby91, uh, all directly supported this show. And they also get access to great content like Second Wind. And they interact with us on subscriber only Discord channels and events and so, so much more. Uh, again, that's stinkydragonpod.com slash first. Uh, we can't thank these members enough and uh, people that are considering, you know, signing up. It's how we make this show. It's how you get Blaine to eat food and survive. So please consider a first membership. I also want to shout out some social media NPCs. Listeners that interacted with us on social media and Discord had NPCs named after them this episode. We're going to go down this list. We got Itchy, the riddle asking ghost that was inspired by Itchy Goku 15, who was a first member. Uh, and that was voiced by Larry Ma- Mato- Matovina. Larry Matovina. You know, Larry, I've known you for about eight years now, and I still don't know how to pronounce your last name. I am so sorry. Uh, Luke at the ghost who forgot their name. Uh, that was inspired by Luca Perny on Instagram. Uh, Louis the Frost Giant was uh, Louis DKRS on Twitter. I'm, I'm sorry, Louis. Or are they calling it X now? Who cares? Uh, the Mummy, aka Raider Rajad, uh, is inspired by user Raider7S. Um, I'm assuming that's from the Stinky Dragon subreddit. And The Mummy was voiced by Hannah McCarthy, who is my boss. And she's at Hi Hello Hannah on social media. And she controls my my employment and boy am i a big hannah fan uh, but seriously she's great uh additionally the headless horseman was voiced by jacob fullerton over at funhouse uh that's underscore jacob fullerton you should go check him out he's a cute boy he likes gundams and he likes star wars who doesn't love that let's get into the production credits uh, the sticky dragon channel is managed by ben ernst this episode of tales from the sticky dragon was produced by kai cook is written and edited and composed by micah reisinger with additional editing work by david song all right, now head on over to stinkydragonpod.com slash first for all things stinky. Once again, that's how you love and support this show. We really appreciate it. And tune in next week for another thrilling episode of Tales from the Stinky Dragon. Is the horse's name Euthygenia by any chance? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> is it a nightmare? Because Blaine's called it a horse. Oh. You know what? I was making That's a joke good. about a horse girl, but I think we got a horse girl here. <laughs> I think Blaine is a horse <laughs> into horses. I don't want to talk about that. <laughs> it's like a meta. We're, we're, in, we're storytelling is here. This, is this horse buxomous by any chance? <laughs> our first a big, beautiful our, horse. <laughs> God, that was fun. Our first uh, piece of Chip Haney merch will just be a, just this drawing of Chip on a horse, just like having the time of his ah. life. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty cool, though.